Isaiah 53, verse number 7. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so opened he not his mouth. How many men do you know? It, 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 from, from the time Isaiah wrote to now, who when they were tried, and Jesus was tried six times, three times by, the, by Israel, three times by Rome, all six of them were bogus, illegal, wrong. How many people do you know who've been tried, when they're tried six times, and who are innocent, and who know the people trying them know they're innocent? Pilate said, I find no fault with this man. How many people do you know that when they go to be tried, knowing they're innocent, make no defense? You never even heard anybody like that, did you? Except in that verse. So how many people do you know that do that. Well, let's just say, in all the last 2,000 years, one in a thousand. Now, I, that's being real generous, but we want to be generous here. Look down at verse number nine. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Now, how many people do you know who died among the wicked, thief on both sides, but were buried with the rich. How many people do you think, and all of and, and since Isaiah wrote that till now, made the grave, died with the with the wicked, but made their grave with the rich? I'm going to say one in a thousand again. And again, we're being very conservative. Come with me to Psalm chapter 22. One more, I want to give you. One more. Psalm 22. And this is a real interesting one to me. Psalm 22, the whole chapter is dictated in the first person. But when you come down to verse number six, 16, he says, For dogs have compassed me, about, compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. Now, the writer is David, and he's dictating it in the first person. The interesting thing about it is that crucifixion, piercing the hands and the feet, was not invented, never shows up in history, until 90 B.C. when the Persians are the first people to crucify someone. The Romans took it and then spread it all over the world. That's a real prophecy. So how many people do you know throughout church history who have been crucified? Well, let's just say one in 10,000. Because it's not a real popular kind of method of execution. Now, let's talk about this just a minute. Here are the probabilities that one person for each one of these, not compounded one guy doing, one particular guy doing all, just the probability that one of these prophecies could have been fulfilled. There are eight different ones. The way you determine what the compound probability is compound analysis, is you multiply them all together. In other words, when, when you, when you, in, in order to get the, the uh, uh, composite analysis, you're going to multiply. If we've got a room of 100 people, 50 are men, 50 are women, what's the chance of picking one person at random and it being a man? One in two. If you've got 50, a group of 100 people, 50 of them are left-handed, 50 of them are right-handed. What's the possibility of picking one person at random and it being right-handed? One in two, 50-50. But what's the probability of picking one person, uh, picking a man who is left-handed? Well, that's not one in two, that's one in four. You multiply them together and you get one in four, 25%. That's how you get compound analysis. So when you add all this up, what you get is 10 to, to the 28th power. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 7, 8, 9, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, 26, 7, 28. 28 zeros after a 10, 10 to the 28th power. That's the probability that that could happen. Now that's with 8. If you had 16 instead of 8... That turns in to 10 
to the 45th power. If you, took, if you had 48 of them, it turns into 10 to the 157th power. Now what's interesting about these numbers is this. According to the, the textbooks on statistical probability, I'll read you a quote. In the field of physics, there is the frequent confrontation of extremely rare occurrences. That's what that is. It is commonly assumed that any probability smaller than 10 to the 50th power is a manifest absurdity. Thus it is defined as such. In other words, to fulfill, to, to, to subscribe and ascribe the fulfillment of these messianic prophecies in the person of Jesus Christ to accidental occurrences according to the mathematical statistical science of, of probability is an absurdity. It's scientifically absurd not to believe the Bible. Now, to illustrate how big a number this is, if you count all of the atoms in the universe, all of the atoms in the universe are said to be 10 to the 137th power, according to the textbooks. There are 300 of these, but just 48 of them is 10 to the 157th power. Do you understand why John chapter 21 says that if all the books were ever written that would contain what Jesus did, the whole world couldn't hold them? The probability that Jesus is God, who the Bible that the Bible's right and Jesus is who he said he is, is a, is a probability that is so big all the atoms in the universe can't hold it. Sixty-six books written by 40 authors over a period of 2,000 years that have one message. The Bible is manifestly demonstrated to be a book of supernatural origin written by extraterrestrial wisdom that lives outside of our time and space continuum. We're going to study more about that next week. And it is an absolutely scientific absurdity for you not to believe it and fulfill prophecy declares it so. Jesus said, I did it that way so that when you see it, you'd believe me. And that believing you'd have life because that's what I came to give you is life forevermore. When the Bible says that Christ died for your sins, you can trust it because it proves itself to be true on every hand and it'll prove itself to be true for you. When the Bible says you can trust the Lord Jesus Christ and he'll forgive you all your sins, you can believe it. You can receive his life as a present possession because it's true. Till we meet again the same time next week, Maranatha. <laughs>